È acceso, sì. Buonasera con microfono acceso, visto che prima era con microfono spento. Benvenuti. Good evening everyone, welcome. Tradizionale appuntamento che segna Our traditional di ogni nuova appointment here. Siamo arrivati al 29esimo appuntamento, al 29esimo raduno. This is our 29th uh, gathering. Berlusconi è presidente proprietario di questo club. 29th anniversary with Berlusconi as president of this club. Questo incontro sono stati 28 anni meravigliosi. 28 wonderful years. Quindi simbolici 28 anni, 28 trofei. And 28 trophies with those 28 years. Nel mondo. Un risultato che veramente la dice lunga di quanto è stato fatto in questi 28 anni. Ma adesso bisogna vedere che comincia il 29esimo anno. World's most uh, capped squad and that goes a long way to show how successful this has been. And now we need to keep pace with the uh, previous 28 years and we've chosen a new coach to do that. He was a fantastic player with his uh, force and determination as a player. It's brought him to be the Italian player who has scored most goals in European competitions, including the two goals uh, that he scored in their last uh, appearance in the Champions League. He's done very well with uh, the youth team and the Viareggio tournament, and obviously the public love him very passionately. So I think that this choice that President Berlusconi wanted is the right choice. At Milonello, I sensed in the air that there was a very positive energy in, the, in, in Milonello. So I think it's the right decision that people in Zaghi should be in charge. And he will do very well at maximum levels, which is what he is. He will be doing. We can do it. We will do it. And I wish Pippo Inzaghi all the best. It's his day. And I don't want to take too much time away from Barbara Berlusconi and Pippo Inzaghi. You know that you are loved enormously by the president, the public, and all of the uh, members of this squad. So another heartfelt good luck, and I'll pass it over to Bar Barbara Berlusconi, and another good luck to Pippo Inzaghi. Are you uh, excited, Pippo? Today I just wanted to highlight the fact, the fact and a lot of qualities about our new coach and a couple of issues regarding the uh, commercial side of uh, Milan. Pippo Inzaghi is a finisher as a man and as a player and I think he can be a great uh, instrument to all of Milan. He is an added value to the area that I am involved with of the club. So we've had a chance to talk about it in the last couple of weeks, a couple of months, and we are aligned in our way of thinking into how to promote the club and uh, to add value to the brand of uh, Milan, which is something that we hold very close to our hearts. I just wanted to underline how well Pippo Inzaghi has done in, in the club uh, with the, uh, the youth team last year what he uh, demonstrated with uh, the youth team participating in the Viareggio Cup he showed how much quality he has and how he can demonstrate that with the players and we hope that he can do the same with this season with the top team. So we don't want to take too much time away from 
Pippo Inzaghi, our new coach. So I'll hand the word over to the microphone over to Pippo Inzaghi. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Galliani and uh, Barbara Berlusconi. Big thank you goes to the President and to Mr. Galliani and Barbara Berlusconi. They've given me an incredible opportunity. Two years ago when I quit, I uh, decided to take on a new experience and I've always wanted to continue with Milan because Milan has given me so many dreams, made so many dreams come true and I've received so much from this club. So I started now to become a coach and to coach Milan because uh, we don't really want to Forget what is Milan, what Milan is all about, that we are the, uh, the most uh, successful club in the world and I am going to give everything I have to this team and make sure that the results are satisfactory. First question for Galliani. Enthusiasm is a word that comes out of this gathering. Do you think the team has enthusiasm for next year? Yes, yes, definitely. Even today, the supporters have been outstanding. The mass of people outside ex exceeded my expectations. After a disappointing uh, season, Milan coming eighth isn't really a good season for us, but I have seen enthusiasm and it shows the uh, hearts that the supporters have. And I saw this yesterday at our, my 29th uh, gathering, pre-season gathering, and I uh, sensed a really good atmosphere at Milanello a cohesive environment and everything that I saw led me to believe that it's going to be a positive season and everything that is inside Milanello, all of the staff and players and I sensed a very positive attitude. I think uh, Inzaghi is the person, the right manager and the right person to take Milan back to the positions where they've always been. And, uh, and uh, it disappoints me to, to think of Milan not participating in the Champions League after we've done it 13 times. And no other Italian team has uh, done that and very few in Europe. We think, I think that Pippo will bring us back to the Champions League and I think because as I said before, sorry for being repetitive, but I saw a, a cohesive environment at Milanello yesterday, one that I hadn't seen in a long time and I'll be, I'm certain that uh, my impression will be right. Another question to Badalot Berlusconi. Is there a particular player that you expect something sì, from this season? Di di yes, da I expect to see something from Stefan El Sharawi because last season he had a few problems, but this season he came a day arrivo, early at our pre-season gathering and uh, he's obviously very much loved by the public. He's a great talent and consequently I expect to see him with a lot of determination and he's going to give the Milan population plenty to cheer about. For Inzaghi, as a player you set yourself some objectives and now as a coach what type of objectives are you setting yourself? I think the most important thing is to recreate the, uh, the DNA of Milan. What does that mean? It means uh, respect, um, a good group, 
and the will to come to Milanelli and Milanello and to train well. We, have, we are very fortunate to do a great, uh, to have a great job and I uh, want to see the right spirit and to return to the winning ways we need to create a good group as I've always seen that as a player and when that's happened it's because you need a, the right coach. Right now I don't want to think of the actual play of the team. My main objective is to create a solid group with respect and rules and principles and of course uh, respect to the, uh, the supporters as uh, they've demonstrated today the supporters as they demonstrated today it really I got goosebumps when I came here and saw how many people and all the enthusiasm that was shown here this afternoon we have to bring that enthusiasm to, to the play and send Milan back to the levels that they deserve Buon pomeriggio, una domanda subito alla dottoressa Barbara Berlusconi. Good afternoon, a question for Barla, Barbara Berlusconi. What is the significance of Casa Milan? It's very young and it's a bit different to the old Via Turati. This is a result that uh, fills us with joy because Casa Milan was born for this reason, for the desire to create a contact between the club, the players, and all of our supporters, because we can't forget that we work and we bring this uh, passion ahead because of uh, the supporters. So we're very happy to see this afternoon all the uh, initial results. We are very satisfied because of all the visitors. Over 10,000 people have visited Casa Milan in this month. We're earning very well as well. The promotion campaign had not yet uh, started, but uh, we think that we can do a much better job now that Casa Milan here and we my desire is that soon we'll be able to celebrate the successes of Milan in this huge square. And today we've felt a lot of warmth from the supporters and it's a very rewarding uh, sensation. So things are going ahead very well. Question for Galliani. The 5th of June, Mr. Inzaghi goes to the Tavernetta where they have lunch who wants saying that he wants to play again I'm just laughing because we just went back to that Tavernetta that restaurant and uh, that's why I'm laughing so how did you convince Pippo Inzaghi to become manager? I thought that day that uh, Pippo needed to start his career as uh, a coach, as a manager. He was uh, a little bit uh, confused, but uh, he thinks that Italy is the only uh, country in the world where players can't uh, turn into coaches. And he can't understand why this happens in other countries, but in Italy it's one of the few where it's not possible. When this is something that uh, he believes, and he believes now that uh, people who played with both youth teams and now with the first teams, and he's still doing very well. He still hasn't uh, increased at all in weight. He still has an excellent diet. And now when we went to play for Caladze's farewell match last year, Pippo came with his uh, brezala, his cured meat. <laughs> and it was the one thing that I asked uh, didn't get downgraded because he brought it with him, his own packed lunch. I think with Pippo, we've uh, drawn the road, the road for him, for him to 
pensa se ti avessimo lasciato andare al so Sassuolo a quest'ora? E lui grazie, grazie, thinks, è vero. Think about if I had let you go to Sassuolo at that time. Un'altra squadra di Serie A importante come il Sassuolo con With, uh, with all respect to Sassuolo, Sassuolo with uh, a great president and uh, as a uh, supporter of uh, Milan he understood the uh, qualities of people and then at that time he said no to uh, people but uh, six months later people responded to the call of uh, Milan there's a long history with uh, people in Zaghi with his father played for Piacenza So that there's a long story before 2001 when people in Zaghi came to Milan. And we haven't never told this story, but uh, he was very close to being a Milan player previously with you. When he'd, he'd made, played and scored a lot of goals with Juventus, but he was immediately accepted by the supporters in Milan. And he was a big part of uh, the Grande Milan. I'm completely in love with uh, Pippo Inzaghi. I don't know what else to say. I think he's the right man in the right place. And I am thoroughly con convinced of this fact. Now, Mario Piccinocchi, I interviewed Mario Piccinotti, and he said, Do you think Pippo Inzaghi can transmit ideas to, uh, to the older players, not just the younger ones? And he said, the values that Inzaghi transmits are absolute ones. What, are, what values do you transmit? He said, sincerity is a fundamental message to transmit to the players and uh, it's up to the players to uh, respect the coaches. Coaches have to be an example for players. I'm going to be myself. I don't want to copy anybody. And Pippo Inzaghi with my faults and, and it's my ambition to, tran to transmit uh, my desire that Milan goes to back to the positions that it deserves. I'm certain that when I accepted this position, because you can't say no to Milan, I thought about the squad that I have and I looked at the players and looked at their values, not just uh, the technical qualities, not just uh, the technical and uh, tactical qualities, because you can always work on that, but uh, the other values that I treasure, I'm sure that we can work on all of those values, and also all of my ex-players, ex-colleagues, they can, they can help me as uh, as my coach, as I respect uh, this position. I'm no longer a player, I am uh, a coach, and I've got to respect that and respect the, the jersey I wear and put everything I have demonstrated on the pitch. The one thing that I'd like to tell the supporters is that this Milan will be a team that... Uh, that will battle on the pitch. I just need to add a particular anecdote about uh, Inzaghi. He has the only player in the uh, Milan squad that stayed at Gallarate while he was playing. From 2001 to 2012, he, play, he stayed, he lived in Gallarate to be closer to the uh, to the team. And now I have to ask you about Mario Balotelli. And then a few days ago, Prandelli said he wasn't a champion. Will Balotelli be a centre forward? Or how are you going to address Mario Balotelli? I'm very calm. 
I've heard Mario after Ital Italy left the World Cup, I think, and I told him as well that the criticisms that he received, he needs to use them to his advantage. Even in my career, nothing uh, was taken for granted. I wasn't handed lots of things on a silver platter. These are things that happen in life, and it's part of growing up. He is uh, a, a part of Italian football, a big part, and he's a very good player that can help us uh, make the difference. I heard him, and uh, I heard from him. And he said he was very keen to come back after the uh, holiday and he wants to leave his holiday early, a week early, to, to get back to form as quickly as possible. And I think that does him very lots of credit. Welcome back. Hello, Pippo, and welcome to everybody. What has changed from the Pippo Inzaghi player and Pippo coach? What type of uh, jump, if any, have you had to do in the way that you confront day-to-day -day problems? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is Antonio Conte. When uh, he became a coach because he was uh, a friend and a former colleague, he said, the one thing that changes is that you don't sleep at night. That's, that says everything, because if you're a good coach, very self-critical, and I am, thanks to heavens that I am, maybe a little bit too much, because uh, people think that uh, when things go wrong, it's, co it's the coach's fault. But I'm ready for this responsibility. I put myself out there to receive the criticism. Even throughout the, my experience as uh, the youth coach, I received uh, criticism. Uh, people who are 40, 50, 60 years of age, who doesn't receive criticism? The important thing is to, to, to do the right thing with that criticism. And I think when I lose a match, with our staff, I think we can, we can turn that around, and that's our responsibility, and uh, people expect these things from us. We have a, third, a, t a squad of 30 players who have different problems on the field and off the field, and you have to be hard with some people, and you have to understand their, their characters, and it's a little bit of psychologist work. I'm ready to, to do that because of all the coaches that I've had who have taught me that there are good moments and bad moments. And I'm going to try and use all that information to my benefit. Because sometimes a coach will tell you the tough things. He gets even more praise from the players. Numbers and ideas of uh, football aside, the fact that Montolivo will come a bit later, do you need to do something in the middle of the, the pitch? In the center? Is there a room to, uh, to work? I uh, was uh, aware of what happened last season. We came eighth, and definitely there's something to do. I'll speak to Berlusconi, but I'm very calm that we, I'm at the disposal of uh, the club, and they know that I want to turn to r return to winning ways, but uh, I'll accept whatever is possible to do. And I will propose to the players that I want a uh, positive thinking Milan and reminded them that when I was playing for Milan, the other players always feared Milan and I want this uh, fear to return. So to do this, you need to have a bit of patience because you don't have a magic wand. You just need the right spirit and the right uh, determination to, to keep the supporters coming. And I think that's uh, something that the players have understood, even if it's just one day. And uh, I want to have an offensive uh, Milan because we are Milan and I want to command when we play. Just a consideration for Ms. Berlusconi and Galliani. 
a presentation here at Casa Milan for the new coach of Milan. Can I take it as a uh, emblematic photo of the season? And <laughs> I think that um, we're here to demonstrate this, that that's our wish, that's the club's wish, our wish, is to send Milan back to the levels that they deserve. We've said that at the start of this season, our wish is to qualify for Champions League. And as such, we are at the disposal of uh, the team, of the club, to make sure that that happens. And we are all working in the same direction, the same determination and passion. So absolutely, yes, this is a uh, emblematic uh, and positive sign to, uh, to send. And I'm, I, I swear that I'm in agreement with whatever... Ms. Berlusconi said. Good luck, people. My first question is, the mission that's been given to you is uh, a very difficult one. Last year the team arrived eighth on the league. There's a long road between now and the end of the season. It's not an uh, easy mission. I'd like to ask you, you've already mentioned uh, respect for the rules and to battle on the field, but um, from a football point of view, there may be one other thing that you need. If there is something that you want to transmit to the team, what is it? I think the fact uh, to be a, a real group on the pitch is very important. And uh, a bit like the example that I gave yesterday to the team, last year when I started uh, the season in Spain, well, when Milan started, started the, the season in Spain, we would never have expected to defeat Atletico Madrid uh, because of the differences in uh, revenue. But then I saw Simeone, I saw the group, I saw how they ran, I saw how enthusiastic they were and the will of... Uh, the will to train that they had, this is what I thought, I saw Atletico, but we can think, we can also talk of Costa Rica at the World Cup, the organization of certain teams and the will that they have, tactically and uh, technically, they are all football players, so I need to bring my, my way of thought, my 4-3-3, or or other tactical methods, but in this first uh, month I'm going to work on the concept of, uh, of a group, of uh, respect for the rules and of uh, the, the right way to, to, to treat themselves and because we do have one of the best jobs in the world, I think it's a, it's a it's a rule that I want to transmit to the players. I'm going to be very hard on that, that they want to train and eat well. Do Mr. Galliani, how do you think about the former manager of the Italian national team that in his first uh, day in Istanbul? He's expressed a negative uh, um, point of view against Mario Balotelli. So it's been said that Milan has been uh, a little shocked by this uh, announcement. He said, no, I don't think that making a, a scandal out of this is, uh, is uh, warranted. Everyone has their own points of view. Everyone can make their own judgments. And uh, there's no need to, uh, to make a scandal out of this. Let's just say he wasn't uh, very elegant, and that's all I'll say. Volevo chiedere invece alla dottoressa Barbara Berlusconi. 
Stead for Miss Berlusconi. We recorded uh, this uh, intervention of yours to do with uh, the crisis in uh, the, uh, the league, which isn't uh, exactly the same way of thinking as uh, Mr. Galliani. And Galliani <laughs> says that this could be from the, uh, the, the, family, the family paper. <laughs> the, the journalist is from the family paper. <laughs> this is our family paper. Very good. So on this uh, point, is it different? How would you uh, provide your point of view? No. No. So no. I swear that it wasn't uh, agreed no, with that no, no. paper. So in in this uh, point, I'd like to underline how important this day is and how positive this is this day for our club and it needs to stay like that. So I'm not going to explain things to do with the league today, so it's going to be another occasion to do that uh, so I can uh, discuss that in another occasion, not today. Um, Galliani says that he is the vice president of the league, but I have never spoken about uh, the, uh, the current crisis with the league, and uh, we'll have a meeting next Thursday. Um, I have been summoned to that meeting, so that will be the point in which I will make all of my comments, like we've always done. The federal elections for the, uh, the league. And we'll see how that proceeds, and uh, they'll try and get the election underway, and they'll find. A president. For Pippo Inzaghi, good luck for me as well. Now, arriving to this point, there's a lot of responsibility. How have you found the, the guys, the, the team? As I said to Galliani before, I found a, an atmosphere and a, a very good uh, environment at Milanello. Very very positive, very fantastic, and I didn't need to meet the uh, Milan supporters, but I already know how passionate they are, and it's incredible how they've filled this uh, square outside this afternoon, even the banners that uh, they demonstrated. I saw some anger as well, anger that everybody needs to have, and I'm sure they're angry that they came eighth, uh, that Milan came eighth last year. And when we hear the Champions League jingle, we'll know that we won't be there. And uh, for the most uh, capped club in the world, it's a, a disappointment. So there's a lot of uh, will to do well. As I said before, we need to respect this shirt. And that's always been my motto as a player. And so when, uh, we, when I lost, I was very hard on myself. I stayed home to work because I hated to see Milan supporters out in the streets. Very sad. That was uh, my way of thinking, and that's what it should be for the team as well this year. Also, the supporters outside were asking for uh, a big signing. Are they authorized to ask for a big signing? Um, well, in the meantime, a, a few signings have already been made, apart from Albertazzi. Menez and Alex are very important players who come from uh, ex very rich clubs, from uh, like pa pa Paris Saint-Germain. So I think this is uh, something that's already been done. You know that we have uh, a squad considering that we will have only one competition this uh, season. The only benefit of arriving eighth is that you only have the first half of the season concentrating on one objective, on the championships. So 
It's a disadvantage uh, economically and sportingly, but it's a big advantage uh, technically. Uh, Milan's history in the last years has been completely different. We've always uh, overcome the uh, first round of uh, the Champions League. Mm. including the two playoffs for Champions League. That's eight matches in the, uh, in the opening rounds. And then in the last two years, we only made the round of 16 because we only made it to the round of 16, but we still had uh, 42 points in 2012-2013 and just as many in the next season. So for a Milan that plays at least once uh, a week is going to do a lot better in the league. And I think this is a uh, determining fact this year without uh, having a preparation uh, will meet the objectives of uh, the season. And last year we had Eindhoven and this time we'll only be playing, this year we'll only be playing once uh, a week and only in the league. So the, uh, the squad needs to respect uh, that uh, objective, so numerically it will be less uh, players, uh, 12 players have already left, some will come, some will go, uh, so as uh, the coach wishes we'll need to go down to 24, 25 players, so just let us uh, do our job and uh, there's a few deals that are currently going on. They are going to be difficult because sometimes it's difficult because the players don't want to go away. Milan and Milan, the city, has uh, a great uh, name and so a lot of players want to stay here and it's uh, difficult to send them to other clubs and from this city, etc, etc, etc. So, so Milan needs to first try and send other players away and then there'll be a few that come in. But the ideas are clear, we are in agreement with the president and with the technical uh, area of the club. From here to the 1st of September, we'll have to see what happens uh, players leaving and players arriving. Personally, I'm satisfied with uh, the deals that have been done already. Question for Pippo. The, uh, the manager that was on the bench before you, his road finished badly. As a youth coach, were you able to uh, get some information to avoid what happened to your predecessor? I learned from uh, my previous coaches that I've had. I've had many. Ten years I had uh, Carlo Ancelotti, who I think is a coach that he... he uh, a coach that, that res earns and demands respect from the players, but I'm Pippo Inzaghi, I think I've got my own personality and uh, I'm going to try and bring that to the players. I'll always forgive a technical error I said to the players yesterday, even a tactical or a, a, a missed goal, a missed opportunity, but but never off the pitch, because I don't think that a Milan player can cannot uh, have a professional player's life. So he needs to eat well, and he needs to perform well off the pitch. So I think the players agreed with me on that, and that says somebody, that's from, from somebody who for 20 years never varied from the lines, he should be listened. Well, this, um, Listen to. Now a question for Galliani. How do you return to the maximum levels competitive when there are clubs that spend 50 million euros? It's an absurd situation. So we're talking about uh, Paris Saint-Germain, I think. 
So it's, um, it's very difficult. The hierarchy has changed uh, in football. It's had a historical hierarchy for many years. It started in the 60s when uh, Lisbon and Madrid and Glasgow and London, they all had the same earnings. So there was uh, competitiveness uh, around Europe and it changed when the television's revenue became high and that changed from change the state of play from country to country and now the third factor is uh, the, prop the, uh, the presidents and the owners of uh, primary materials so they bring wealth from, from manufacturing and services and uh, so the solution is you need to be good at what you do Surely there are moments uh, in the Champions League and you can see now that mainly the same clubs arrive at the finish of the season. But, uh, but we want to be in this uh, elite group of clubs. Surely our country's economic uh, situation isn't the same as it was 30 years ago. In 1980 the Fiat uh, group uh, were the biggest in Europe, and now it's not. Italy isn't in the elite group of Europe, so we need to work on fantasy and we need to do more with less. But I think our know-how and our tradition can allow Milan to, to stay at a high level. Milan has an advantage uh, with the market pool and TV rights and so the, uh, the clubs uh, in Italy are different uh, than the ones in Premier League. I know all the big leads but I'm, I'm very confident uh, once the uh, Italian Championship was uh, a point of arrival all of the big players played in Italy. Now, no golden ball plays in Italy. The last one was uh, Ricky Kaká. Look at the previous uh, champions of the world from Brazil. In, used to play in Milan. Rivaldo Ronaldo. And now they've gone to uh, the 450 million uh, euro revenue clubs. So it's a different situation to 25 years ago and we need to be up to the task. And being positive uh, is how we, we are going to do it. But certainly it's a, it's a different era. It's changed. Not just for football, but just but for our whole country. Everybody criticizes uh, football, but... Uh, but they don't uh, compare all the sectors in Italy. And if um, you remember back in the 1980s where we used to win Europe, European Leagues and uh, Champions League and Milan until 2008 were the top of the uh, European listings. We've made a quarter final, a semi final. So clearly we need to be better. This club has been driven by Silvio, by Silvio Berlusconi until six or seven years ago has uh, been able to keep their uh, position despite uh, the lower revenues, uh, revenues. So I think if we can make few errors in our transfer market, if we uh, lower our costs and uh, we have a great uh, coach as we do. I think our future will be bright. Now to Ms. Berlusconi, many compliments for what you are doing in this uh, new political uh, agenda that you have. 
My question is, because the uh, revenues for the club is strictly related to the sporting results, does the club wish to invest on the transfer market in, in an effort to, uh, to get the results? And uh, the response is yes. And uh, I think we're demonstrating that uh, investing on the transfer market and in the, uh, the technical side of the club, but also not to forget all the other areas of the club that is very important to invest in so that the club can go ahead with its own two feet. So this is uh, one project, but we have uh, a few other projects we're in the wings. One important one, of course, that the whole team is uh, looking, is working towards the construction of a new stadium and a, our own one. Of course, it's not an easy uh, operation because it doesn't depend, ex depend exclusively on us. There's a lot of uh, public relations that needs to, to do to convince uh, the uh, bureaucracy in Italy to try and help us. Of course, there are other areas as well that needs to be reinforced, and we're working on them. A couple of questions for people. At a certain age, you get a bit... Uh, now, you spoke of uh, recreating the group. Also, you that were a great player, how important is the coach? Some people say it depends on uh, that the coach uh, has uh, an outcome like 15, 10, 15, 20%. People said it's only when they lose that it's only 10%. But instead, when you... <laughs> I've never said that uh, that was the case. I think that uh, a great team like last season can come eighth as well. So it may have been a, a technical gap, but uh, it wasn't. There must have been some other problem. And uh, I would never judge uh, my predecessor, but uh, what I want and that, that, uh, that I want as a, uh, the same thing I wanted as a player. A number of times uh, that we were in the Champions League, in that four-year period, uh, there was a very healthy group and a great coach, but uh, he didn't need a lot of uh, influence uh, the way that we, uh, we coached. But I'm going to explain it to the players uh, slowly. I don't really need to talk about my experience to the players, but, uh, but we had a great ambition in those years. Maybe we didn't think that we were going to win as much as we did. We won the Champions League in Athens, and we wanted to win the Super Cup in, uh, in Monte Carlo. Maybe we were ambitious. And uh, we got a lot of results, uh, but we were very healthy. Maybe sometimes the coach didn't let us uh, play, but uh, we weren't upset about it, and we went about our business. But uh, we would never insult the, uh, the coach, but we'd do it in other ways by uh, convincing him on the pitch. So I knew that I always had to... Uh, deserve my place on the team and that's what I let the other players know and that's something that I want to transmit that for 20 years this is the kind of player I was and uh, so for me I hope that they receive the right uh, advice. Hi people. I needed to ask you, I don't want to ask names, but uh, do you have uh, an, an urgency, do you need a need from this team, from a sector, in one particular sector more than others? 
we have uh, the expert here, Mr. Gal Dr. Gagliani. We, we talk to each other three or four times a day. Uh, send him a few messages, knowing exactly what the response will be, because uh, we are convinced that we have the same ideas. I remember when I spoke to Mr. Berlusconi the first time, it struck me that uh, the enthusiasm that he still has, a president that has won so much, he still has a lot of enthusiasm like a kid, and this he has transmitted to all of us. And he's giving me a lot of want, and I think he could be the, uh, the biggest acquisition of the club because he brings a lot of enthusiasm to the club. Then we know there may be some players who want to leave and once they do leave the new players know what our urgencies, what our requisites are and I uh, hope that they can do well. I just wanted to ask uh, so again on the, uh, the rules and uh, and you've spoken before about Mario that uh, nobody knew that he asked for a, uh, a personal coach before he came back from holidays. Do you think this is a good starting point for Mario Balotelli? And uh, have you given yourself that question? Have you asked yourself about Mario Balotelli? I think this is uh, an excellent uh, point of departure. I've never really given me that myself that issue. I think that players learning from Pippo Inzaghi need to prepare themselves on the pitch. I've said this to the team, I've not hidden it from anybody, that uh, with me we start from zero, because unfortunately we came eighth and we need to start from scratch. So I will demonstrate my talent as well as his talent for his uh, teammates, so I'm very uh, calm and, and I am sure that Balotelli will be an example for the other teammates. I just wanted to take advantage of uh, the name Pippo Inzaghi and uh, ask you about uh, the performance of Italy in the debacle in the World Cup. So being coach of Milan, does that mean you have a uh, decisive role in uh, bringing a big team to the Italian national team? Did you expect this uh, elimination from the World Cup? Of course I didn't expect it, but this is... Uh, this is the, the good thing of football is that nobody expects uh, the elimination, not even that of Brazil, but uh, we need to be prepared and that's what we're doing here at Milan in with the, uh, the youth sector of uh, Milan. We've had good results and we create the man and then we send him to school and then we develop that player that he needs also to learn patience because if we ask him at one stage to, uh, to play a game and he plays it bad, we don't want to be overly harsh. We need to uh, renew this uh, Italian football because uh, the Italian national team is an example for this for the country and you can see the example from uh, Germany that uh, Germans invest a lot on the youth and we have a lot of uh, youth players in our team and I'll um, choose my moments to send them the right time when they are ready to play at San Siro because playing San Siro isn't easy but I think uh, they'll do a good job.
Just asking Galliani on Germany versus Argentina. Were you expecting this match? And uh, what do you expect will happen? I've never uh, ever made a forecast and I don't know how to predict the roles. So they don't exist in, in football. It's difficult. Uh, sometimes football matches have uh, different, take different turns and there are moments where everything changes. So it's difficult to uh, to make a, an evaluation. I think that uh, Germany will have a lot more difficulty against Argentina than against Brazil. Some coaches, you can't really understand what and how they uh, put their team on the pitch. But this is uh, an argument uh, for the, for the supporters and certainly Brazil this year. If you think about a player who used to play with Brazil years ago and uh, with certain respect, there are, um, there are no forwards uh, for Brazil and at this moment in time, these are the forwards that they have. And I'm not talking about the, uh, the 60s when maybe they thought that uh, Pelé enters for Brazil. And now, no one like that is entering on the pitch for Brazil. Surely, you can s it's certain that uh, Germans are a lot better. They're very organized. Uh, they have a, a lot of dynamism on the pitch, and people love watching Germany play. And pr maybe I'm revealing something. But uh, I think uh, if you look at uh, Germany, it's the same way that um, people used to play, the same movements that uh, people used to do. And that's how maybe Milan will <laughs> restart. <laughs> that's correct, that's correct. It may take a bit of time, but uh, that's the movements on the pitch that we like. So looking at uh, Germany playing against Brazil, then of course there won't be a game, but I can assure that it won't be like that against Argentina. Just at, uh, people, so with respect to the previous Milan of uh, Allegri and Sedov, what will be the changes? or Inzaghi's uh, Milan. <laughs> Honda. And uh, how are you going to uh, utilize uh, Honda? Honda hasn't uh, yet arrived. He will uh, join the team on the 22nd in New York. He's a player that I like. He's a very professional player. I'm not really sure what position, probably in the three up front. If we play with three up front, he can play out in the right wing, even if he's a left footer. I like uh, to have a player of his qualities out there, or he can be a, a midfielder, but uh, these are technical details. And I've said it before, when the transfer market finishes at the end of 31st of October. My objective is to uh, put players in 100% condition to be players that will uh, provide their correct uh, level of skill. I haven't really thought about a, uh, a scheme just yet, but uh, first I want to, I want to know the, the team, the squad, and uh, given that, then I'll decide. But uh, it will be uh, an aggressive uh, way of playing, because uh, that's the way, as I said before, we need to put in the minds of our opponents that it will be difficult to beat Milan.
Good evening. Shona Tanoi, you've insisted a lot on the technical values of this team and uh, it'll be a good starting point. With the new players that have arrived, where can this uh, team arrive? Third place, close to third place. Obviously the uh, objective is to return in champions. He said if I knew that I'd be a magician. I hope so, but I don't think Milan can stay forward outside the, uh, the uh, European Cups. Of course, uh, it, it would be great to arrive in the top three with the new players that have arrived that I asked, that I asked for. I've been contented because Alex and Menez in particular, they were club players that other clubs uh, were after and Milan needed to win that competition with them. And especially with Alex, he was almost slipping away because there were some big offers on the table. But before getting these two players, we needed to do our research. But uh, they're two players that have, uh, are very pro professional and they can make the difference. And uh, when you consider El Sharari was out for eight months last season, now he's uh, recovered. And uh, he will give us uh, a big hand. Also, De Chilio, who had a lot of small problems throughout the season. Um, he'll give us a hand as well now with Montolivo coming back. It's a big loss for us, not just because he's our captain, but he's also a big presence in the dressing room and who takes his place uh, for this opening part of the season will do his best. Thank you.